Alright, in this video we're going to talk about domain and range from a graph and I will put a link in the description of this video on a couple to a couple of other videos I've done on dom domain and range. So if you're looking for domain and range of parent functions uh, I will put a link to that type of video and then if you're looking for basics of domain and range I'll put a link to that video. But in this specific video we're going to look at various relations and how to pick up uh, what the domain and range is from specific graphs and we're going to work some examples in just a second. So just a refresher on what domain and range are and which which is which uh, we can draw always draw this picture domain and range okay to help help you keep it straight on which is which domain uh, of course is all the x's all the x coordinates and um, range is all of the should put it this way probably and range is all of the y's all of the y coordinates of a specific graph or relation or function all right the other way that you can remember it is if a lot of times in mathematics algebra uh, included alphabetical order will work often to help you keep things straight and this is no different here so um, you can draw it this way domain D for domain comes before R for range, and then X for our X coordinates comes before Y for our Y coordinates, and these two go together. Domain goes with X, and range goes with Y. Okay, so there's a, a couple of ways that you can help um, keep that straight as far as whether domain, which domain goes with, and that's the X's, and that range goes with Y's. Alright, so let's move on to some examples here. Okay, now we've got some example relations here on these graphs that we can look at what the domain and range is. Remember that, again, domain is our x, so we'll start there. Our domain, in this case, on this first graph, when you're looking at these graphs, really, to pick out the domain, you want to start with your minimum domain and then your maximum domain. So uh, in this case we're talking domain so we need the x. So let's find our minimum x and then let's look at what our maximum x is. Okay. So uh, looking at this first one our minimum x is going to be this circle right here. We have an open circle which means this is this coordinate is not included in the domain. So that would be negative 1 2, 3, 4, 5. This has an x coordinate of negative 5. And then our maximum domain, this arrow here, means that this continues on forever in this direction, down this, down this way, just like that. So it's drifting uh, towards the positive, in the positive x direction. So that tells us that we will actually hit all x's uh, from as we continue on in the positive x direction. So that means it goes on to infinity. So the way that we would write this is that our domain, I'm going to put D for domain, is all x's greater than this negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. x greater than 5. All x is greater than 5. We do not put the equal to bar underneath that because we have an open circle. All right, so that's the correct symbol. Our domain is x greater than 5. All right, now for our range here. So our range, again, we want to look for the minimum and the maximum y. So the minimum y is going to be on to infinity because this graph continues down in the negative y direction. So next step, we come to our uh, maximum y. Maximum y is right here at this point, not including this point. So that's at y coordinate of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So in this case, because we have an open circle, we're going to use this symbol. This is y is less than that 8 coordinate. So y is less than 8. Not equal to because the circle is filled in. So it's all y less than 8. All right, so let's move on to this next graph. All right, this one right here. I've got these graphs kind of squished in here, so we're going to have to uh, write on the 
graph itself, I think. I might can fit it up here. So let's do domain right here. And then we'll put range right here. That'll work. All right, so for domain, remember, we want to look for our minimum and maximum x. So the minimum x coordinate is going to be over here, and we have an arrowhead right there. Okay, so that means it continues on forever in this direction. So it's going to go hit all x's uh, in this negative direction from uh, continuing on to infinity. So our minimum x is negative infinity in this case. Our maximum x is right here. The maximum x coordinate is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, an x coordinate of 6. So we're going to say this. Our x's, our domain, is all x's less than or equal to, we put equal to because we have a filled in circle, the, the x coordinate of this dot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So all x is less than or equal to 6. All right, so let's uh, look at our range now. Uh, one other topic I, I should have covered already, but I think you're getting the idea. Uh, you want to look for these minimum and maximum x and y's. You also want to look to see whether you have an arrowhead, which means it continues on forever in that direction, or a terminating circle. In this case, on this first graph, we had an open terminating circle here and an arrowhead here. So we want to look for those uh, end points is another way to look at it. So on, on this graph we have a filled in terminating circle here and an arrowhead here. So we're going on forever in the negative x direction and the positive y direction here but we have this terminating dot right here that's filled in. So in both our domain and range statements will have an equal to bar underneath them. Then we just have to figure out which direction our inequality symbol should point. Alright so we have this terminating circle right here and we know that we continue on forever in the positive y direction. So we know uh, from this dot being down here and us, our graph continuing on in the positive y direction, we know that our inequality should be y is greater than or equal to this terminating dot because it's all y's bigger and including this y coordinate right here. Okay, so that's negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So all y is greater than or equal to negative, negative 7. All right, I'm going to redo that. It's kind of hard to see. Negative 7. There we go. Okay, let's look at this next one. All right, we start analyzing this graph, this relation here, and we can immediately see we have two terminating circles. There are no arrowheads on the end so we're going to stop at each of these two coordinates here and here. Uh, we can see that they're open so both inequality uh, both domain and range statements will have a just an inequality with not an equal to bar underneath. All right? We know that that's going to be the setup. So let's do our domain first. Do it right here and then we'll put our range over here. All right, so domain, we're looking for the minimum x and the maximum x. So in this case, the minimum x is negative 1, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So in this case, we're going to have to put x right in the center. And we're going to be greater than this negative 6 here. Negative 6. Again, I need to make room for that. Let's redo that. So I'll put negative 6 here, and x is greater than that. And then we'll, we'll be less than, not equal to, not less than or equal to, but less than this maximum x here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So x is between 6 and negative 6, not including either one of those. So our domain is from negative 6 to 6, not inclusive in this case. All right, range we're going to to have a similar situation. When you have two terminating dots like this, you're going to be this setup right here where you have the x or y in the center with an inequality sign on e either side and your uh, terminating circle coordinate uh, on each side. Okay, So we're going to have the same setup so we can go ahead and put that in. We know y is going to be in the center. We are going to be greater than the minimum y, and we are going to be less than the maximum y. So the minimum y is down here. 1, 
two, three, four, five. So that's negative five for the minimum y. The minimum will always go over here on the left side, and the maximum will go over here on the right side. Okay? The maximum y, one, two, three, four, right here. So our y's are less than 4, but greater than negative 5. If you're confused about how to read these inequality symbols, you can watch the video on inequality basics, where I talk about what these symbols mean and how to, how to read them. Realize, when we read this from the y to the right, this says y is less than 4. When we read from the y uh, to the left, this part of it right here, that part is read as y is greater than negative 5. Okay, make sure that you understand that. Alright, so this next one right here, we'll, I'll put this off to the side here. So here, don't let this curve scare you. This It's no big deal. It, it basically has two terminating dots here and here, and then we're reaching a maximum uh, range value up here. So the domain is going to go off of that dot right there and that dot right there okay so let's do that first so our domain in this case is going to be it, it's going to be a similar situation to this one right here because we have two terminating circles on either end so x is going to need to go in the middle here so we're we're going to say that x is less than our maximum coordinate but greater than our minimum coordinate so our minimum and let's put the equal to bars underneath. We're going to have that because we have filled in circles. So the minimum is negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So negative 7. Negative 7 is our minimum x. And our maximum x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Positive 7. Okay. So we it's all x's. Our domain is all x's from negative 7 to 7 inclusive. Meaning that negative 7 and 7 are included in our domain. All right, let's look at range on this one. Range is a little more tricky on this one because our minimum y is down here. Our minimum range value is down here and our maximum um, range value or y value is up here at the top at the vertex of this graph. All right, so we're going to put y in the center again because we have two uh, different endpoints there are no arrows on here where it continues on forever so our y needs to go right in the center will be in this case because we are solid at these minimum and maximum points we're going to say less than or equal to the maximum and greater than or equal to the minimum so the minimum is negative one two three on this dot and it's negative one two three on this dot so in both cases we have a y value the minimum y value is negative three so it's going right here. The maximum y value is right here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 goes on the right. Again, minimum value on the left, maximum value on the right. All right. Okay, let's move on to this graph right here. We'll put our domain for this one here and our range for this one here. Okay, so we have a horizontal line segment here. It's not a horizontal line. We don't have endpoints. Uh, pardon me. We don't have arrowheads on the end, so it has terminating circles on either end. On this end, we have just a open circle, so that inequality symbol will not have a bar underneath it. On this side, for our maximum x value in this case, we will need the equal to bar under uh, as part of our inequality symbol. Okay, so we have two terminating dots, so we know x is going to go in the middle. And we will have a less than or equal to on this side because our maximum has an equal to filled in circle. And we will just have a greater than, x is greater than this symbol right here. Or pardon me, this uh, x coordinate here. So that minimum is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6, negative 6. I'm going to undo that real quick. We don't quite have room to fit that in there. Let me do erase this here. All right. Let's redo that. So we have negative 6, we said, right here. Okay, in our domain. So negative 6 and our maximum were equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So our x's are from negative 6, non-inclusive, all the way to 7, inclusive. So 7 is part of the domain, negative 6 is not. 
All right, so that means, just so we're clear on this, just like a normal inequality statement, we're saying x is greater than negative 6. So that means negative 6 is not included, but five, negative 5.999999 is. Negative 4 is. Negative 3 is. All the way up to and including 7. 7.00001 7 is not included in the domain. Okay, make sure that you understand that and watch those inequality basics if you're still confused on how inequalities work. All right, let's look at range. So a range value, notice we don't have any range values except for 1, 2, a y-coordinate of 2. Every point on this line segment, the inclusive circle here and the, the open circle and this entire line segment has a y-coordinate of 2. So in this case, we can just say y equals 2. That's it. That's the only part of our domain. Uh, pardon me, of our range is y equals 2. Okay? All right, let's move on to this last one and we'll wrap up this video. All right, so on this, we analyze this um, relation here. We do not have arrowheads on either end, so we know that uh, we don't have to worry about that. We have terminating circles on both sides. In this case, it's going to be an opposite situation because we now have a vertical line segment, which means similar to this situation, only opposite, the domain is going to have only one coordinate, but the range will have several coordinates involved. All right, so let's set this up. So our domain is simply going to be x equals negative 1, 2, 3, 4. That's it. That's the only x coordinate in this domain. On this uh, terminating circle here that's filled in all along this line segment and then down to the open circle here. Now our range is the one that will have multiple coordinates so we need to put y in the center. We are going to say less than or equal to here because our maximum y right here is a filled in circle. So we need the equal to bar as part of our inequality symbol here. So that maximum uh, y coordinate is 2 here and our minimum y coordinate is not going to have the equal to bar underneath the inequality here because it is an, it is an open circle so let's find that negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, negative 8. Alright so I hope this video has helped we've worked through several examples we've talked about how to handle just about every type of relation graph that you are going to see and uh, how to set up your inequality symbols to show the domain. Again, I will put um, links to other domain and range videos so you can get more specific if that's what you're looking for. Make sure and subscribe and always post comments and ask questions. I'm here to help. We'll see you in the next video.